Hey, welcome back to another Mind the Mic. Here with a very, very special guest, um, Brother Eliza Taylor, former New Zealand Warrior under 20s, grand final winning captain, former New Zealand Warrior grand final player, 2011, former Kiwis representative, the Braves, a bit of a pilot. And just got an amazing story, and just uh, he even once had uh, 77 tackles in a game was the record for a little bit too. I think the bro with the with the funny teeth took it away. Uh, shout out to you, Kazi. How's things? I'm good, bro. How are you, man? Um, thank you for having me on. Thanks for the intro. <laughs> um, <laughs> long time ago, those long time ago, but um, nah. Thanks for having me on, man. Really appreciate it. Nah, all good, brother. Um. Take us back to uh, a young Eliza, I guess, my brother, Taranaki boy, eh? Taranaki boy. Yeah, man, grew up on a farm, dairy farm, milking cows, bro, straight up. Um, had five brothers, grew up, like, <clears throat> out in the paddocks. Yeah. My old man raised us by himself in a little town called Partier. No, that was the that was our big town that we used to go in and get excited to go to Partier, like, when we were young fellas to go to town. Oh, yeah, the big smoke um, part there. Yeah, humble, beginnings, <laughs> humble beginnings, man. Um, that's where it all started. Uh, my right, my dad loved rugby. We played rugby union growing up. Of course, of he course, always volunteered, rugby. like at the local rugby club. And um, yeah, passion grew from rugby from a young age. Watching the All Blacks, watching the Hurricanes was my favorite team. And then, um, yeah, bro, it was a simple life, humble beginnings, man. Yeah, really grateful. I look back now. All the things I got to experience, you know, growing up outside, growing up out in paddocks, exploring, hunting, fishing, all that stuff. Yeah. And I look at my kids now, they've they've grown up in England, bro, freezing air, stuck inside, cold airs. Like, you know, haven't haven't gone fishing yet, haven't gone hunting yet. And they're like seven, Different eight man. years old, bro. So yeah, man. Uh, like I'm really grateful. I look back on my childhood, I'm really grateful, bro. And, and you talk about your kids, brother. You got four, four daughters, is it? Yeah, bro. Four daughters, bro. Wow. Far wow. out, bro. Wow, we, because I got one yeah, cousin and she's hectic, brother. I can't imagine four. Far out. Yeah. Bro, I've got, I got five brothers. I thought, surely I'm going to have a boy. I've got five brothers. This is like, nah. Nah. <laughs> what, are you, any plans for some more? No, nah. nah. That's, that's it. Nah, I'm not sure. Eh? Um, I love a boy, though. I love a boy. It'll be so cool. Mm, that would be, be the king, too. Shout out to the boo. So, the Taranaki experience, and as you said, growing up, a, a Hurricanes fan in rugby, you know, rugby league not being too big in Aotearoa in general, but especially in Taranaki. So, very strong rugby there. Who, who was your favorite Hurricanes player since you were a Hurricanes fan when you were a kid? Christian Cullen, bro, hands down. Oh, bro, I, knew, he was the uh, man. I thought it would have been. <laughs> all the time trying to be Christian Cullen in the backyard, gee. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely a rugby union country uh, region of the of New Zealand. Uh, I don't think we played, we weren't allowed to play tackle until we were like 10 years, 12 years old, I What's think. It? I don't know if that's still the rule, but it was a oh. touch. And we weren't allowed to wear boots until we were like 12. I remember that. Oh, true. But I, I look back now and see why they want they don't want to scare players off from the physical side of the game. Um, yeah, mm. but I don't know if the rules have changed now. But we were allowed to play tackle until we were like eleven, I think. It was weird. We would have sharpened up some skills, do we? You're only playing touch too as well, even though you couldn't tackle. Yeah, that's, you that's what up I'm, some like ball skills and all that. Hmm. And I think they obviously that's the reason. Um, that was the reason because I remember my little brother, his name's Wayne. He grew up in Auckland. He played league, bro. He was in boots before me. He was like seven playing tackle, and I was just like, "Hey, <laughs> fine." <was>, this way, <laughs> and and Auckland too, brother. Fine. With, with all the big also, see. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, fine. Yeah, it was a bit. That was a big wake up call when I when I moved to Auckland, and then I started playing against uh, Polynesian boys. Like, yeah. So in the rural areas of New Zealand, obviously it's all Māori, um, pretty much all Māori or Pākehā. Yeah. But when you move to yeah, Auckland, pretty... cars take on like, <laughs> all the ooses and all the boys, the island boys, gee. Yeah, yeah. Going to school, Albert, bro, I'm sure you're 30. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm 
<laughs> Bro, yeah, brother, I don't know. Paul's uh, does. All the boys yeah, were shaving, yeah. like full beards, tattoos from the islands. I was like, nah, what's your passport <laughs> say? Surely. <laughs> Bro, I remember, I remember bro. going to like intermediate. I remember going to intermediate in Auckland too, bro. And I was thinking, like, bro, I swear this is the, this is the bro's dad and this, the bro's walking around. Oh, that's he goes to your school too, like, far. I swear you're thirty two, out, bro. What are you up to? Uh, triple, bro. bro. I couldn't believe it, bro. Especially you know, all the island boys, they get the arm tattoos, the bands, the bands. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, bro, the I was just like, yeah. Oh, bro. You're not 16, yeah. surely. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> Crazy. Maybe they were born on a leap year, cast on a leap day. <laughs> yes, right. Right. Yeah. Oh, going back to Christian Cullen, though, brother, I, my uncle was saying, too, because my uncle used to play against him when he was young, bro. He was like, my uncle, shout out to my, te- my uncle Tops. He, he reckons Christian Cullen, bro, they'll play yeah. his team. That bro would score, like, five, six tries a game every time they played when they were young bucks, too. Just a weapon, eh? Christian Color. Wouldn't surprise me, bro. Every time he's bro, it's just the way he like his balance, man. He could just when he ran, it looked like he was gliding like it was crazy, bro. We used to love watching him play. Mm, 100%, because he 100%. So, what you Taranaki, how long were you in Taranaki until you know you said Auckland was there, but uh, Nori North India? Uh, I was well? there until I was about 12 years old, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I was, um, I was in Pate till I was about 12 years old. And then we um, we all moved up as a family to Kaitaia. Uh, we lived all around the far north, my old man looking for work and that. But that was a cool experience living up there. I lived up there for about four years. Um, we had some family land up there, so we were always going diving, uh, always out on the, the coast, getting mussels and that, uh, mm. going fishing. Mm. So that was, cool, that was a cool experience, bro. Um, Obviously, I look back and look at my kids, bro. They they haven't been diving yet. They haven't been fishing yet. Like mm. stuff like that. It's crazy. Like, even going camping on the beach, like stuff like that, after school um, with the boys, uh, school yeah. friends. Yeah. Just the simple yeah. things, eh? Um, yeah. And you took it for granted. Home I teams. definitely took it for granted. Yeah, I took it for granted Whoa. when I was a young fella, definitely. But um, oh, now, like whenever we go back, I'm definitely gonna be. I'm showing the kids all that kind of stuff. It's mad. Good memory. Oh, Mickey. Mickey, brother. Oh, I heard you were homeless a little bit, the oh, living out of a car or something, and on your journeys around the north. Yeah, bro. That was my old man, bro. Freaking um, up to no good. Uh, we left, yeah, we left parts here because I think the bro was the old Bay Corp was, was chasing the bro. <laughs> <laughs> You're the Bay Corp. Bro. Yeah, what more? Yeah, yeah cuz, bro. Um, the old car got repoed, etc. It, it bro, heaps. Um, yeah, one morning just told us jump in the car, boys. We've got to go. Mm-hmm. Random man, it's bro. That we drove all the way up to Karai from Partier. Gee, that's like a lad, that's like an eight hour drive in the car. Um, trick, yeah, trick for trick, sure, bro. And um, yeah, yeah, the yeah, the bro was in a bit of financial trouble. I think my old man's passed away now. I never really oh, asked him, eh? Hey. I always think back, bro. I oh, asked him, I should have asked. Because I was a young fella, bro, I was just like, okay, dad, yes, yes, dad, okay, okay. I won't question yeah. you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we all got those uncles, well, brother, yeah, we all got those bro, uncles, yeah. and sometimes dads, dad, 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 you know, we lend you, lend, you know. So, ah, shout out to the yeah. old man, he passed away, you said, um, obviously a big influence on your life, brother. Um, oh, bro, huge influence. He was my best friend, bro, huge influence on my life. Um, yeah, it was back in, like, at the Warriors, when I saw it at the Warriors, bro, and, um, yeah, rattled me for a while, man, to be honest. Rattled me big time. Because that was my first biggest loss, like death in my family. And it was real close to yeah. home, too. Um, and the biggest, a, your yeah, best friend. A, yeah. yeah, definitely, bro. It was crazy. Um, and I was still young. I was like 20. I was 20. Um, so, mm. yeah, it, bro, not, not a day goes by where I didn't think about the bro anyway. Mm. But, um, yeah, he taught me a lot, bro. He taught me a lot, a lot of good stuff. Yeah, told me some wrong stuff, but I'm really grateful, obviously, <laughs> for uh, bro. yeah, bro, a lot of wrong stuff. Like a lot of well, wrong what's stuff a wrong? Can can off. you can, can you say one wrong thing that he taught you that you think, oh, that was way off? Can you can you cut it over to that? Oh, bro, that? bro, bro was teaching me how to freaking grow marijuana plants and made he made sure, boy, you plucked it then. He told me, bro, oh, it's gonna turn female. 
blackmail, boy, don't let their plant turn female. <laughs> just stuff like that. It's just like, oh. <laughs> at the time, Depends I was like, you... okay, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> bro, because like, you're up, the fence on where you are on the broadcast. Bro. Like, <laughs> bro. Like, hey. like, you know, we'll go to the farm, like someone else's farm. We'll, he'll plant his stuff, he'll plant his weed plants, and they will put like wire mesh around the weed plants and stuff like that, bro. It's just like cuts. <laughs> bro, bro yeah. gee, a 12 year old boy is not supposed to know that stuff. Because he. Because you were 12, I was 8. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh, I feel you, brother. I feel you. I had some of those wrong uh, teachings too. <laughs> bro, it's just like, yeah. Oh, bro, I'm not supposed to know that stuff when you're 12, 11, bro. Um, yeah, but anyway, bro, look back, you know, grateful as the, the bro was just trying to make do with what he had. I uh, made some poor decisions along the way. Um, but, you know, bro. Live and you learn, man. Yeah, what's what's the bro's uh what's your old man's name? Uh what's your, what's the bro's name? Uh your dad. His name was Ron Taylor. Ron Taylor, bro. Yeah. Shout out to the brother Ron Taylor, man. Rest in love to the brother. Uh you know, you obviously yeah, okay. even though you taught some wrong things, you raised a, a a legend of a man anyway. Um shout out to your pops, man. So you you talked about the warriors and that brother. How did all that happen? Obviously, under twenties and all of that stuff. How did that, and you said St. Paul's, obviously, their first day. Yo, yo, yo. So I was living with dad up north in Karaya. And uh, my mum lived in Auckland. They were separated. Mm-hmm. And um, I got to 16. And then I thought, bro, I've, I've got to, if I want to make it in league, bro, I've got to get out of the far north. I've got to go live by mum. And um, so when I was 16, I moved down by mum. I left my old man. And uh, mum signed me into St. Paul's College. Just on the random, bro, no scholarship. We just turned up one day and said, if, like, can I start coming here to the college? Shout out to Mr. Rice. He was the principal at the time. Um, but he actually let me let me come into the college and and, and go there and learn. And, bro, that's when I met. Because <laughs> um, I knew, I knew, like, St. Paul's and the Warriors had a relationship. Like, all the best yeah. St. Paul's players, you'll Guns. go in development straight away. So that's what I wanted. I just wanted to try and get into that system and then break into the Warriors that way. Um, yeah, man, I went to school where Manu Ma was there, all the Lao Si brothers were there, uh, the Palavi brothers, um, uh, Saliva Havili. Bro, was how there, big was there, Sam G? How tall was Sam G? Bro, he was, he was the same size. He, he's <laughs> oh, one true, of those guys, cool. I was like, ah. yeah, <laughs> yeah, Lies, he yeah. same size, bro. bro I how, first met how tall was he? And I was like, I don't know, bro, but oh, it was those <laughs> combos, yeah, yeah, I was looking up. Bro, he was two years younger yeah. than me. And I was like, nah. He had a tattoo. I was like, nah, you're not, you're not, you're not 14, guys. <laughs> you're not 14. <laughs> bro, I remember one oh, time wow. I see, I see, I, one time I seen the bro, you know, and then I was trying to talk to him, but I couldn't hear him, brother, because he was too far away from me. <laughs> too high up. <laughs> Help me. Don't even hear you, cuz. <laughs> Lad. And, um, weapons, they weapons. Yeah. So they, so, they, they, they all, you all came from the eh? Far up. Weapons. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we jammed the first 13 and we jammed rugby. So rugby was Saturday morning. First 13 league was after Wednesday after school. So we um oh, we yeah. all played both. So basically our rugby union team was like a league. Players full of league, bro. So it was cool. Like it was a sporting school. We enjoyed it. And then um then we started training at the Warriors. So Monday after school, we'll go to the Warriors train. Uh, Wednesday after school, we'll go to the Warriors train. And Friday after school, we'll go to the Warriors and train. Just for like two how, hours, like gym. How does field. that happen, brother? Uh, and, uh, does it, how, eh? how does that happen? Just because of the connection with the Warriors in St. Paul's? Or like we yeah, bro, specific yeah, so, players? So Mr. Rice. Yeah, Mr. Rice will say, oh, he'll ring Tony Ira and say, look, i got this player here, got this player. And Tony Ira will go, oh, yeah, bring him in, bring him in. Like most of us, we weren't signed or anything. Most of us were just turning up, bro. Turning up for the the love of the game. <laughs> mm. <laughs> we're turning up for one day. Like, maybe we'll make it. Oh, bro, we got like one training t shirt, one Warriors training t shirt. Bro, I was yeah, stoked there with that. I looked it. after that, bro. I uh, kept it nice and clean. <laughs> um, <laughs> Cracked it, brother. But yeah, we were all carpool. 
Like after school, yeah. we'd jump in someone's car, like new Money Miles' mum would always take us to Mount Smart, yeah. we'd train there, Monday after school, uh, uh, Wednesday after school, and Friday after school. And so that's where True. that's where we got into the Warriors. We all got our foot in the door. Then. And then the under-20s happened the next year, 2008. Um, and that was a great experience. A lot of the players mm. made the Warriors under-20s team, and then, then you just worked your way up the system. You went from yep. 20s to reserve grade up to first grade. Um, so that's something that I really enjoyed about the, the pathway we had at the Warriors. I, I'm not sure if that's still yep. there, but it was really clear. It was really clear for a lot of the players of you know, each steps you go up to make first grade. So um, it, it was a good system at the time. Mm. Do, do you think, like, obviously the, the system, like the 20s system is finished now. Do you think they should bring it back? Or do you think the reasons that they ended it was sharp? Like, what, what are your thoughts on that? I think, in my opinion, I think they should bring it back, definitely. because. Um, when I was young, I, I just taught you professionalism really quick, like catching hotels, catching buses, uh, discipline, time, timekeeping. Um, got the curtain raised before first grade, so we played at Suncorp. I remember we were 18, we played at Suncorp before the Broncos played. Like crazy experiences, yeah. bro, crazy. Um, and, bro, that just it prepared you for first grade. Like it prepared you. Um, to play full time when you finally got your opportunity, and um, that was mm. that was a good incentive. Um, so the boys that didn't make the twenties team when they got dropped, they went and played Fox. So I made the Fox mm -hmm. competition strong in Auckland. Um, yep. Yeah, bro. I, I thought it was I thought it was a great system. When you were older than twenties, you played reserve grade, and that was a strong competition as well. Uh, mm. Playing reserve grade Vulcans—that's what they were called at the time. Yeah. So there's a really good pathway mm. for all, all the lads coming through the system, whatever age you were, to hopefully one day get a, a first grade crack. So do you feel like now that the, the system's gone, it's sort of uh, 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 it's a bit uh, not as clear, not as clear, like, you know, for people that aspire to get up there and stuff, is it? Oh, I'm not sure because they've got an SG board team now. And a Jersey yeah, flag team as well. Finally. So uh, we never had SG ball. So I think that's that's a positive for the Warriors. I think that's a real positive because you need that. You need the pathways for the the young lads coming through the stepping stones all the way up to to first grade. Uh, before the twenty system came in, like we were just turning up to development training, not paid, hoping yeah. one day Ivan might give us a tap on the shoulder or give us a call and say, "Hey, mate, I need you in the team." Like. Well, the chances yeah. were like zero of that happening. So <laughs> yeah, really yeah, fortunate yeah. for the um, for the under twenty systems come in, man. It was awesome. At the Warriors, by the way, like in the twenties and that you fellas cracked it too, eh? Like being like you fellas were like cracking it from like sponsors in that eh? as young bucks, like yeah, yeah, we were, we were spoiled, bro. I look back on those times, I was like, bro, how spoiled were we? Um, like Puma was our shoe sponsor, so all of our boots, free Pumas, free trainers, Pumas, um, our kit, our gear. Traveling to Australia, we got all our air points, so at the end of the year, we could go on holiday all for free. Vodafone, obviously, the main sponsor, so every time an iPhone dropped, we got the new iPhone. All the players got a new iPhone as soon as it dropped, bro. It's crazy. Um, Gee. I think too spoiled because sure. a lot of boys took it for granted. Um, oh, true. <laughs> yeah, bro, we were like getting all the stuff we hadn't even played first grade yet. We we're getting all this free stuff and we hadn't even properly, you know, established. But, bro, I look back on the time, bro, all good, happy as. Um, yes. Yeah, good Practice. times, bro. Uh, and and would... to yeah. be fair, we've got bigger player pool to choose from than like the oh, Sydney boys, the Sydney teams because there's so many teams in one town mm. where Auckland, there's one town and there's all these good players uh, that can play footy so it's really hard to make the Warriors 20s team for sure Yeah, well, the most successful 20s team in that like 10 year period that the 20s was around, yeah, you fellas won three titles, so like the 20s from the Warriors so, and you, you were the 
you're the captain of one of the makers here. Oh, obviously, Ben Henry uh, didn't make the final, either, the grand final, but integral part of their team too. Uh, what was that like, cuz? That, that was cool, bro. That was um, obviously Shawnee was um, our half at the time, and he was killing it, bro. And his kicking, everything, whipping. Uh, but we had a lot of good good players in that team. Uh, you know, Nafis, Saifiki, Glenn Fisiahi. Oh, I, so I think the majority. Kicking? Yeah. Yeah, bro. Bill Tupo, I think majority of their team, they all debuted first grade. I think majority of them. Um, that's, that's, that's amazing, brother. Yeah, shout out to Ivan and, and John Hart, because John Hart was the was the the chairman at the Warriors at that time. And oh, he made yeah. Sure From... His experience, bro, like he made sure it was all um, the systems were in place for players to develop. And it was working well, bro. It was working really well. So I'm not I'm not too sure what the the system is now, but yeah, hopefully uh, the young fellas are getting a decent decent pathway. Hmm, definitely. Um, talk about your debut, brother, for first grade. How how, how does that come about? Because you had a bit of a false start first day, brother. Yeah, yeah, bro. False start as um, <laughs> supposed to debut in '09. Did my hemi. Then I didn't debut till 2011. Two years later. Um. How, how, what do you mean? Like, put your hemi, put your hemi. What, what do you mean? Like, huh? like, like, was oh, it bro, a, like, a serious? I was supposed to, yeah, I was supposed to debut at Captain's Run before my debut game. I did my hamstring, bro, oh, yeah, Captain's and run. no one was around me, and I was only jogging. Um, oh, so yeah, I was, oh, oh. Bro, I was disappointed, I was so disappointed. And then, um, yeah, two years later, I made my first grade debut, and that was cool. It was in Topol, I think, yeah, it was in Topol. Um, yeah, just playing against with the, the boys sharks, finally against the sharks, yeah, sharks, sharks, yes, yeah, fly, finally get to play. Um, what the first grade boys, all the 20 boys had already made their debut, so it was really cool to finally be out there. Finally, and mm. great memory, too, man. We got the win, um, but you know, played with Felitti for, for the first time, uh, That's Christian Inu for the first time. Uh, it was, yeah, bro, it was a choice. I really, really enjoyed it. A hundred, and obviously that year, brother, you went on to make the grand final. But what was it like? Just uh, what was the experience like jumping from twenties going up that level to first grade, brother? Or just what was the big? What kind of differences can you speak on? Like when it comes to twenties, to obviously you said it prepared you. Twenties did for for the the top yeah. flight, but like what was the difference? What's main differences in your opinion? Uh. The biggest difference would probably be the speed, the speed of the game. Uh, the speed of the game was a lot quicker, and you were under pressure for longer periods of time. So if a team had you defending your try line, they will always get a repeat set. So that's another set on your line. Or they'll mm. always get another repeat set. So there's another set on your line, like defending for long periods of time. Um, that's the That was the biggest difference, in my opinion, especially as a, as a forward. Where and now in the 20s, it would always be a random mistake handover pressure of valve release. But in first grade, bro, the pressure valve was just always going until you until you broke it and changed momentum. Um, yeah, the momentum of the game was big. You could feel when the other team had the run of the ball, they were getting all the calls, they were building pressure, and you just had to learn to hold on, hold on, hold on, absorb their pressure, and then apply it back to them so that was um, probably the biggest difference from first grade to 20s uh, but yeah just, bro enjoyed it like finally being first grade after all those years training for it um, yeah hard 100% dream coming true dream coming true bro so um, just try to make the most of it and enjoy those moments bro because I look back now and I was like man I should have enjoyed it a bit more I should have spent time with the boys a bit more like got to know them um, mm. That's probably one of my only regrets, really. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And hopefully, whoever's listening to this can take some of that, brother, and you know, do do what you're regretting, and then you know, maybe maybe get to know the boys a bit more if they're in that situation. Yeah, it's right. Hope so. Hope so. Yeah. one hundred. Um, was 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 your old man around to to see you debut? Yeah, he was, bro. He came down, bro. He was mean as time too. Uh, yeah, never forget that. Had to feed with the old man after the game. Uh, he was stoked, super happy. 
it was good to see him happy. Yeah, um, yeah bro. Yeah, and then yeah, the next year he passed away, bro. So he, he got to see me debut in that. So yeah, he was he was sick, but um, yeah, gone too soon, man. Gone too soon, hundred percent. So grand final, my because he's ended up in the grand final. Uh, but even that, like, because no one he gave you probably a chance when when he's finished in the top eight to probably go all the way, eh? At that time, uh, yeah. Especially, you end up in preliminary final in Melbourne, and shout out to SJ, you know, off the back of all you guys, Mahi, doing a bit of, you know, a little bit of this, that, to Louis yeah. Brown, Nick Minna user in a GF. <laughs> What's that week like, cuz? What's that whole, bro, that whole even play. the finals? Big play, bro. Um, We'll start back at preseason, man. That was a hard preseason for that year. I remember, wow. Yep. We will get pumped in preseason, massive, like, huge concessions. Um, yeah, bro, Shawnee came up with some big plays that whole year. They got us uh, to the prelims. Uh, he was on, on fire the last, yeah, the last half of the season. I think, who do we mm-hmm. play first? Broncos, yeah, we got pumped by Broncos first round of the finals. <laughs> yeah, the McIntyre sure. system, the McIntyre system yeah. saved us. It, it gave us a free life. So, um, yeah, we played Tigers in Sydney, and that's when Christian Inu um, scored a crazy try, like, right on the buzzer. And then, um, yeah, we went to Melbourne, played Melbourne. We got over them, and then we, yeah, got to Manly. Um, it was, yeah, bro, it was, you know, being a young kid, bro, you thought it was always going to be like that. I always thought, oh, we're yeah. always going to make the finals. Oh, we're always going <laughs> to make the grand final. And I remember yeah, the older players like Michael Luck, who else was there? Lance Ohio. Mm. Uh, who was the old dudes there? Rubes, I think Rubes was there. And he was just telling us young fellas who were there on our first year, bro, and they've been working like 10 years trying to get into a grand final. They've been like, bro, make the most enjoy this because, you know, we've been we've been trying for the last eight years to make a grand final and you just make it on your first year. They're like, bro, like, soak it in because it doesn't happen this easy and i was just like chat chat i'll take that chat <laughs> um, still young bro just still young you know naive as mm. like oh yeah because when, uh, when you think about yeah, it bro, too but like you fellas came enjoy, through the grades bro, like, 20s the 20s and that and then nick minute uses you, you carve up in the 20s so yeah, you probably yeah, think yeah. ah this this rugby league stuff's easy baby <laughs> like, like, let's go. <laughs> yeah he's just ripping everyone up in 20s and that nick Manna. naive mm. ignorant um it's it's kind of like um it was kind of like the penrith boys so the penrith boys now they came through the 20 systems bro they're winning everything um like fish and uh by clearing all that, they were cleaning mm. up the competition when they were young, and then looks like they've just come to first grade, bro, and just did the same, had the same attitude in there. <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> it's good to see, bro. It's crazy to see. Um, yeah, but yeah, bro. At, at the time, young kids just naive, really. At the, personally, because I thought it was going to be like that all the time. Hmm. What, what do you like? What was the week like, though? The grand final itself, like, what's grand final week like for, as a player in the grand final? Yeah, it was cool. We did a lot of promos in Sydney City, uh, a lot of signing sessions, a lot of media commitments. Um, we we stayed at Coogee all week, uh, Coogee Beach. That was our base. We always stayed there during the year. Um, nice beach. Bro, spoiled as. Uh, mm. It was cool, bro. Uh, my family got to come over. Some of my brothers came over as well. They got to watch yeah. the game first time they've been to Sydney. And yeah, just really grateful uh, for for the opportunity. I suppose Ivan picking me as well because it was out of me and Akuma Tai uh, hey, the for, big the, man. for the for yeah for the second row position. So yeah, Ivan actually choosing me for the game that that was bro. I always owe it to Ivan, man. He bro, he changed my life. The bro, straight up. Yeah, um, we caught it all on the bro, brother. Because like you know. The bro's the goat at the moment, or the moment goat anyway. For yeah, like, yeah. You know? Oh, bro. Like as a Ivan human changed... and as a coach for them. Yeah, yeah, bro. Ivan, Ivan's changed my life. Literally changed my life, bro. Like he, like he gave me my debut. He, gave, he, was, he wanted to give me my debut when I was 19. He let me train with first grade a couple times uh, during the season. 
like gave me a call. I said, hey, E.T., do you want to come train with first grade? And I was like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm already there. Cuz I'll fill up the water bottles too. I'll be there. I'll be there. It's just like, um, but yeah, then they, they took me to Penrith. Um, bro, looked after me there. Shout out to Beck and I've, um, bro, awesome couple. I owe so much to him, man. I'm so grateful, bro. Yeah. And it's good to see. It's good to see he's killing it. It's really good to see. Um, in 2015, the uh, Gus School got rid of Ivan from Penrith. I don't know why, yeah, but that was the probably yeah. the worst call that Gus has ever made. Um, you know, Gus is pretty on usually, but yeah, I remember at the time I was just like, bro, this is crazy. And then you know, you, it's good you to end up over there back. for me. What's that? Sorry, brother, it's like a delay on my end. Fucking not trying to cut you off, my cousin. Um, no, okay. just. It's a, uh, it's uh like just talking about um Penrith and that you ended up over there with IV. How did all that pan out? So to get over yeah, there. Yeah, so so Mad Monday after our grand final against Manly. Yeah, because we all know Ivan was leaving. Yeah, Mad Monday, me and Ivan were talking and we were talking. Oh, you want to come to Penrith? Da 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 da. And I was like, oh, I'll think about it. And then yeah, sure enough, it happened, bro. Uh, really grateful for him, Ivan for the opportunity. Um, I met a lot of great people in Penrith. Um, heaps of people in Penrith I still know today. It was a good club, a really good club. And yeah, obviously grateful. And so I ended up in Penrith from a conversation after our grand final. So that was cool. Uh, it shows, it shows um, I think, just in your story, brother, the key of relationships, you know what I mean? Building relationships with different people, you know, like if you didn't have that relationship with Ivan. You know, who knows if you'll go to Penrith and then obviously other things happen on from then. So no, yeah, that's, that's absolutely, wicked. bro. Absolutely. I was uh, I was actually gonna do a footy hack on it soon, bro, building relationships off the field. Straight up. Boy, footy hacks. Gee, straight up out, bro. Up the footy hacks too, cuz he because footy hacks is because I didn't like I didn't go and search for other podcasts that you had been on until after you said yes. I just looked at Footy Hacks. I was like, bro, the bro's trying to, he's a, you know, he's a veteran trying to talk to the young bucks. Obviously, not just the young bucks, but other people around the game. But like, you're really trying to speak to the rangatahi, to the young bucks. And that's something that I want to do, not just in the game, but in general, like with this space, I want to sort of create things to be like, if you're a young Māori brother that grows up and their dad's teaching you the marijuana plants and all of that, to, to know that's not the only way that you can crack it or, or you know, being an all black or a warrior, it's a very minute. Like, you know, amount of people that make it there. Maybe you could turn a mic on if you're good at talking and, you know, message some people and ask them to come on and have a call it all and, you know, see what happens. Yeah, have a definitely. chat. So, uh, definitely. when I seen that, brother, I was like, far. The bro's trying to talk to the people. I'm going to ask him if he'd be keen to come on, you know, and then sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gave me a lot all of confidence to, to ask yeah. others, brother. So, thank you. Is it footy hacks? Talk on that, though, my bro. Yeah, especially with, um, especially with technology today like bro anybody can flip their camera around and start talking to it and then post it online like bro it's so easy to you know just record a content in 20 seconds long um yeah. you know put some music in the background and so yeah any young kids out there watching this um yeah it's super easy to start up a a vlog it's free to open an instagram account it's free to have an x account free start. that's the key brother yeah. free don't need no newspapers to pay money yeah. to. To can uh, you put my ad in no more? Just you know, no, that's it. Put it in. It's the world's changed, the only man. thing, yeah, the only thing it really costs is your time. And at times, the most valuable yeah. commodity we have as human beings. But like, just like anything, yeah. you know, you put that mahi in, like you talked about, all the hard work, the pre seasons, the hard work as a young buck to become a warrior, to become a grand final player, and to be where you are. Same in that kind of money, say, apply the same principles, copy and paste there, you know, you know what you want to do, definitely, make the bro, videos definitely. and just put that grind in there. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, yeah, it's up to you. It's, it's up to no one else but, but yourself. That's the that's the uh, the only thing holding back is, is yourself, really, uh, when you really think about it to so anybody listening out there. It's the only person that's holding you back is yourself. Definitely. Yeah, 100 total, my bro. Like Gary V says, everything that's happening to you right now is your fault. 
And then when you yep. realize that, uh, you know, the good and the bad, the, then, you know, right. you don't make uh, no more excuses. Everything yeah. else will start to align. Push 100%. forward, brother. 100. 100%. Um, so you go to Penrith, cousin. You go to Penrith. Uh, yep. What was Penrith like? You, you played with some of those young bucks that are shredding now uh, through, through the things. But what was Penrith like as a player? Uh, yeah, experience bro. life. Big wake up call. Big wake up call in terms of um, like training in the heat. Like the heat in Penrith in preseason is crazy. Like training in forty oh, yeah. degrees, bro. Like that would that will sort you out real quick. Uh, <laughs> Eliza's right. like, take me back to Bethel's cuss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bro, lad, lad. And there's always flies around when you're running, bro. Sometimes there'll fly oh. going your mouth in there, like stuff like that, bro. It's like you're always like this when you're talking, you're like this because the flies in there. Um but bro, good times with some good players. Obviously, the juniors there when I first got there, bro, I was like, wow, these juniors are crazy. Um like Fisher Harris, oh, you seen the it What's that? You've seen it then too. You've seen it then too. Like these fellows oh, are going to be mean. But I felt old and I was 26. I felt old. Um, <laughs> yeah, bro. I was 26. I felt old because Fish, Fish, Corey, Vili, Kikau, bro, they were like 18, 19, 18. Bro, they were ready to play. They were ready to play first grade. Easy. Easy. True. Uh, yeah, Moses Leoda was there as well, bro. You just knew. And they were winning their 20s grand final. They won the SG Ball grand final. And, bro, obviously, they're all coming to first grade. I remember, yeah, I felt old when I was at Penrith. It was crazy. But it's good to see them go well now. Uh, Yoey captain as well. Uh, he made his debut when I made my debut at Penrith. So it's um, it's really cool to see him, what he's achieved in his career. Been following it closely. I've always got a soft spot for Penrith. Watching yeah. them play. Uh, always, bro. Yeah, always. Uh, spent what? Well, I lived out there in the community for about seven years. Even yeah. when I was playing for the Tigers, I still lived in Penrith. I was driving into uh, Leichhardt. But, um, true. yeah, bro, good yeah. memories there, man. So, so, like, you play for a couple of NRL teams. Like, who who would be – who who's your favorite? Like, you got a soft spot for Penrith. Like, do you – are you a fan? Like, like this is my team at all? Or you just – like, a couple nah, of teams? It'd be the Warriors, bro. That, that was that's uh, a That's it. That's all yeah. I want to hear. <laughs> it'd, be the, it'd be the Warriors, bro. Just um, oh, just Mount Smart, bro. I've got so much uh, memories of Mount Smart Stadium as a young kid. Um, even Mount Smart number two at the back because we always trained at four twenty back at Mount number two, bro. Bro, so many times. Um, did some hard training sessions out there. Uh, running the stadium steps. On the east, or uh, the west stand, uh, bro, it's heaps of memories at Mount Smart. Eh? Um, they always got a soft spot for the Warriors, man. Um, Webby, I spent a lot of time with Webby too, as well. He's the coach, bro. Hey, was so, he at the Tigers yeah, too, or Penrith? Or Tigers? Yeah, he was at was the he Tigers. Was... He was assistant coach. He was assistant coach at yeah. the Tigers. Spent a lot of time with Webby. It's good to see him get his first grade opportunity, bro. He's done his apprenticeship. Um, happy for him, man. Um, because he's he worked hard under Madge and under Ivan, and to see him go well as a first grade coach, bro, it's awesome. Was he the man, brother? Was he the man though? When you like, did you see the potential? Yeah, that, yeah. Oh, the bro's gonna he, be mean. He was like, he was like one of the boys, bro. <laughs> yeah, he was like one of the boys. Like you could talk to him. Like he wasn't like a, a strict dad's kind of guy. He was chilled. Like you just talk to him about anything, and then you'll talk about your footy, do your video with him. Yeah, bro. He was always chilled with me. Um, and I think you need that approach today in coaching. I think you need to be relaxed a bit more. Um, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna do some content on it. Like I think yeah, the days of the I think the days of the, the drill sergeant coaches, I think those days are gone, like those angry airs, uh spray all the time, coaches lose their stuff, coaches. I think those days are mm -hmm. Because people were seeing through that. People were seeing through that. Like, Ivan, bro, I don't, I think I, I heard him spray once. That's it. Once in my whole career. True. I was about eight True. years. True. Very hard. Yeah. He hardly out. got angry. He hardly got wow. angry, bro. Um, where, where I had met Michael Maguire, bro, the bro was angry every week. <laughs> he looks <laughs> like a two cuz. <laughs> yeah, bro. Hard. Oh, man. Big difference. Mm. Big difference, bro. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. I think today, bro, coaches need to be more chilled and like mm. 
cuddle the players a bit more instead of saying you sure shit you gotta da 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 da. I think yeah, those days are gone, bro. I'm saying. Oh, but well, do you, do you, speaking of meds, obviously the whole Kiwis uh thing. Are you are you happy with the way the Kiwis went with uh, selecting Stace over over Wayne Bennett? Uh, are you bro? Are you happy? I don't know what like, what do you think there. about Something... that? Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Um, I, I thought Madge could do the two jobs, New South Wales and Kiwis. I, I thought I thought Madge could do that easy. Um, he oh, lives yeah. and breathes rugby league, bro. He really lives and yeah. breathes it. And with Origin, bro, it's only like two months in the middle of the season or three months in the middle of the season, and the Kiwis at the end of the year. So I had no doubt that Madge could do it. Um, happy mm. for Stace, though. Stacey finally gets an opportunity. Um, to be a you know head coach of the international team, I'm sure he's looking forward to it. Yeah, but I thought Bennett would be there for sure, like no brainer kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Wayne Bennett, OG. Yeah, I, I just you, don't know. Have you ever been uh, under Wayne Bennett at all? And then he had any, any nah, much never, experience? Never. No, nah, never. Nah, I heard he's the man though. Yeah, that it's what well, must be. Eh, but uh, people don't want to play for be. you if you're not the man. Yeah. yeah <laughs> <it must laughs> Yeah, so so you, what you're saying there is that that like the generations have changed. Like the a lot of the the young bucks now, they don't they don't vibe with the whole drill sergeant major pain nah, vibes. No Not way. the one anymore. Eh? No good. No, no way, good. bro. Like dudes get offended, triggered easy. Like I said in a reel the other day, like when a half sprays you, don't mm. have a sulk or like don't don't take it to heart. Yeah. Like, I seen it. I seen bro, it. Too many of these young fellas, bro. Like when a half says, "Oh, I need you to work harder there." Bro, they'll take it to heart and they'll be like, oh, he doesn't like me. Like, and I'm trying to say, bro, they want to win. Like, what did you expect when you come to first grade? You're going to be around competitive players that want to win, bro. So if you're not mm. towing the line, of course they're going to give you a spray. But some young fellas today, bro, they can't handle that. They can't handle the, you know, the truth sometimes. Um, <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. And, and more players. They need a cuddle, kind of like, oh, you know, you're all right. You'll get it next time. You'll you'll get it all right. Um, where back in the days, it'd be like, you freaking da da da, you freaking da 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 da. da. Mm. I think those days are gone of 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 blowing up and being angry at people. But I really do. Yeah. Um, so, but but you did you respond more to a cuddle? Or did you respond more to a, to getting the getting told what up? Getting uh, no, like getting told what up, bro. I had to. I didn't like the cuddle, bro. I didn't yeah, like yeah, yeah. He, it made me feel like, bro. Wait, you don't want to. If you've got to give it to me, bro, give it to me straight. Don't, don't, yeah. don't beat around the bush, bro. You know. Um, but everyone's different, obviously, bro. Everyone's different. But um, yeah, that's a, that's a well today's generation, bro. You got to be careful because to say you, you're a coach and you spray a half who's a, a marquee mm -hmm. signing, and then that half goes to his manager and say, oh, the boys are disgruntled. Or he goes to the media and says, oh, the oh. boys are disgruntled with this coach. Bro, a fire started. And your ass yeah. is on the line now if you're a coach. Bro, you got to be careful, man. Uh, crazy. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of politics, eh, cuzzy? That's life. Eh? Oh, bro. Politics and... Bro. A lot of... bro. <laughs> There's a lot. There's yeah. a lot. There's a lot. I think that's why the um those hacks of people have seen a different eye to it because they don't a lot of people don't see the things that go on behind the scenes they don't mm. see all the stuff the politics that go on behind the scenes at a rugby club all they see is the 80 minutes on the field oh this looks cool this looks flash mm. but like all the yeah. backstabbing and that go that goes behind the scenes bro brutal brutal 100 and then even even on the flip side because the the positive side of like uh the success like people will see like you know, people like you know Penrith cracking it now, and then they continue to crack it. Nick Minute, what um, you know, Nick Minute. Oh, like, oh, these fellas are too cocky. Like, I think bro, bro, they might yeah, be too cocky, but they're winning, cuz they're winning. Bro. Beat them then, beat bro, them if you want them to shut up. <laughs> yeah, like, you know? like the media, oh, bro. They're just gonna make a story out of something. Oh, they're too good now. Oh, look, they're cocky. Oh, yeah, arrogant. Uh, like, it's just hard. like, bro, media, bro, just making up a story. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're Black Rock Vanguard owners here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yo, bro. Yeah. 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 But that's them, though, bro. brother, trying to 
like you said, push narratives in. And uh, do you think, or what was it like, obviously, being in Sydney? Because because rugby leagues, you know, it's rugby leagues, it seems to be a bit of a buzz at the moment. And when the Warriors are doing well, home always buzzes, and like with, the, with a bit of Warriors fever, it seems to be up the wires, it's trending hard. But what was it like being in Sydney, like the, the hub of rugby league media and all that? Like, did you yeah. feel that kind of pressure because he is a player? Yeah, yeah, you do, bro. Especially at the Tigers, not so much at Penrith, because everyone kind of looks down at Penrith, because Penrith's out oh. west. Oh, west is yeah, 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 bro. Yeah. Oh, like when I was there, when I was there, as people do, they look down on the low socioeconomic areas. You know, they're like, "Oh, bro, you live in Penrith, ooh." Like, no, Westies uh, are cracking it, eh? One four and yeah, all bro, the boys yeah, and the Panthers. So, yeah. so, so Penrith kind of got like left alone, if you know what oh, I okay. mean. But when you went to the Tigers. That's right in there, bro. They always own the media papers. Always. Roosters, they're always getting pumped in the papers. Like there's always something going on. So you definitely yeah. felt the difference between two clubs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At the Tigers, you felt the pressure far more. What do you think it is? Cause just because of uh like they they got the like the three sixties and all of those shows that they gotta have something to talk about. So they gotta fucking, you know. He, like, oh yeah, there's definitely and... there's definitely part of that. Definitely a part of that. Um I remember when Russell Russell Packer and, and Josh Reynolds, when the Tigers didn't want them. Yeah. Bro, they were just making up stories about them. Oh, they left the game early. You know, should their contracts be ripped up or like bro, they were just hunting them to oh, try wait, and get what them. was all that now? Like that they left the game at half time or something. Like bro, they like, made a, made a big deal I've about done that it. So many times before. Like <laughs> In the last ten minutes, <laughs> you want to beat the you want to beat the traffic leaving the games. So you jump in your car and you leave, bro. Everybody yeah. does that, <laughs> um, um, but they just made a massive story out of it. And then they try to like they try to rip off the bro's contract for leaving the game early. It's just like, bro, what? Um, yeah, yeah, bro. Just just little things <laughs> like that. The media, bro. Just they need something to feed on. Yeah, like uh, another example of that because it's not it's not the same. Obviously, it's not rugby league, but the principles are the same. Even uh, you know, Spanian, the very Spanian. Yeah, uh, yeah. I seen him like he went to Logan. Obviously, Logan, very famous hood in uh, south of Brisbane, in South Brisbane. There, uh, four double one four used to live there in uh, Kingston. Shout out yeah. to Logan, but so what he was a fan there. But he went there. We went to Logan the other day. And then, uh, like, it was buzzy, like, you know, heaps, heaps of people filled the streets with and followed him around with those hood talks he's doing on YouTube. And then uh, the media put out that, like, a police car got kicked. Like, that's the only thing they fucking, uh, right. they, they could put it in a bit. Like, that's, like, one police car got kicked. Like, right. like the, the very does a video, he's like, bro, I can't go kick, I'll go kick a car now. Like, is that all? Like, like, like people are punching, like people, people are beating their their women, people are doing all these things. You want to report that I can't go kick just because I went because yeah. the bros got buzzed and, and he's outside of the system, he's outside of I the know. mainstream mayor. Actual bro. Pickle, yeah? <laughs> right wing conspiracy theorist kicks car tire. <laughs> we are Nazi. <laughs> bro, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. anti-vexer kicks tire. Yeah, yeah. Bro, okay. uh, uh, I mean, I right. hear that one all the time. I was like, Fuck, hold up. I thought Neo was black. He's a Nazi now. No, yeah, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah, but exactly. But narratives and stuff. Oh, talking about the pin riff in there, and you ended up at Tigers, but there was a whole lot of bullshit that happened there with a bit of a pocket of from back home. Hey, eh? Ian Miles. Yeah. That fella. What, what happened yeah, there? Who's yeah, Ian Miles? My, my, my bro. <laughs> Yeah, what? Ian Miles Morning was my manager since I was 17. Had a good relationship with him, crazy. Um, built a lot of trust and rapport with him. A lot of trust, man. Um, he actually taught me a lot, bro. He taught me a lot in terms of speaking, media, commitments, outside footy. He actually taught me a lot, to his credit. He taught me a lot, but, bro, yeah. Yeah. I come to the end. And, um, yeah, you understand... Uh, in hindsight, bro, hindsight's a crazy thing, man. A lot of things where you think, oh, bro, did I actually let him do that? Or oh, did I actually do that? Because I trusted him so much. Part mm. of my upbringing as well, bro, like I lost my old man. Yeah. And I was looking for that new, another father figure, bro, to help me through in that. And, and Ian was that guy. And I gave him a lot of trust, bro. I gave him a lot of trust. And um, yeah, got burnt by it, man. Got burnt big time. Listen, learn. Um, hmm. In hindsight, bro, I, 
I was sober making my decisions. I was in control. I knew what I was doing. So that kind of, as Gary V said, bro, this is your fault. Everything's your fault. Like, responsible, bro. So I look at it, bro, and I'm thinking, okay, yeah, bro, I made those decisions. I wasn't drunk. I wasn't, you know, I was sober. I was critically thinking about things. And I made some of those decisions, bro, and they come back to bite. But i got to live with them. That's what I've learned from it, bro. I've lived with them. Yeah, it's shit what happened. Bro, it's fucking, yeah. It's so, really so can, we, can you speak on what did happen, my bro? Like, uh, like and oh, how yeah, you found great. that? Were they? Um, yeah. yeah, pretty much. So, obviously, I'm not from a financial background. Yeah, a know, lot of us Maori and, and Polynesian. Yeah, yeah, I've got no you accountant know. in my family. I've got no lawyers in my family. Uh, so, I met uh, Ian Miles and, bro, he was... He introduced me to like Olympic athletes like Mahe Drysdale. Had lunch with him. He oh, introduced yeah. me to like Storm Uru. So, bro, every time he was doing this, I was like, bro, this fella's the man. Like, this fella's yeah. actually got, you know, he's got skin in the game. And okay. they respected him as well. And I was like, okay, all right. I know, you know, this guy knows people. He could help me definitely. Um, and so when I went to Penrith, I was like, oh, well, he kind of set it up as well. I was like, bro, can you help me make some smart choices, investments? Da 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 da, da bro. I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm Maori, bro. I ain't got nothing. All I want to do, bro, is play my best forty for Penrith. That's yeah. all I want to do. No, Train no financial either. literacy. Yeah, bro. Yeah. And yeah, we we made an agreement. He was happy with that. I was happy with that. I was stoked with that because all I had to focus on was training hard, like training hard, keep my head down, do the mahi. All good. Um, yeah, it wasn't until. Uh, I left Penrith and I got a mortgage. So I'm paying off a house. And then I got an email, a letter on the letterbox, and it said, like, oh, you're behind in your mortgage repayments. And I was just like, bro, it's impossible. It's crazy. No way. And then we went to the bank, 2016, we went to the bank, and then we just printed out, looked at all the transactions and that. Yeah, man, it was it was. It was Ah, it's a bit of an eye opener, man. Um, but I, I heard sick. it was like 900, eh? 900 plus tra unauthorized transactions. Yeah, yeah, bro. So he, he had duplicated a credit card. Uh, oh, he okay. had organized for all the mail to be sent to his house. All the uh, internet banking, bro. Like he set up a duplicate credit card and was spending that crazy. Mm. Um, and, you know, the mortgage repayments, I thought they were going to the mortgage, but they weren't. Um, yeah, heaps of stuff, bro. And a bit of a wake-up call for myself. A hard one to take, really. And and there, bro, and then we went to... Um, and then once I cut off the his banking access, banking account access, it's pretty much the last time I heard from him kind of thing. So... Um, it just, yeah, it just shows, man, there's a lot of people out there that mean well, they look like they mean well, but got different motives, man. It's crazy. Wolf in, wolf in sheep's clothing, eh? Yeah, those ones. Well, bro, like, you know, my family met him, <clears throat> everyone met him, and they wouldn't, they would never think that. Like, that's how, mm. that's how well it was played. Like, I, I, I text those um, Olympians, and I told them about the situation, and they, they would never think that of a, they would never think that. Oh, people true. Would... Yeah, bro. Like, yeah, it's crazy, crazy, bro. Far out. And and so, what happens, brother? Like, you obviously go through litigation, all of that stuff. Yeah, what's we did the, that. We went through court, went through everything. Um, finally got a court date. Took about three years to get a court date. And then the bro just declared bankruptcy before court, and that's game over. That's all she wrote, bro. Um, wow. Yeah, bro, that's oh, all she wrote. Really? Yeah, it's, it's oh, crazy, bro. Like, um, and then I went to the police after that. So I went to civil court hmm. to try to get the money back. The bro did the, the old bankruptcy ones. Okay, sweet. And then I went to a criminal court to the police, just go, oh, bro, this is what happened. Da, 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 da. To the New Zealand police, bro. And they were like, uh, nah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna follow them up. We're not gonna, bro. And I was like, bro, you got evidence proven in court we won our court case the bros stole like 450k from me we got evidence and the police were just like nah like nah you know we ain't got the resources you know we don't really want to follow that up 
It's like, bro, bro, dudes are going to jail for 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 picking the wrong size power, bro. Getting the small crayfish, bro. Dudes are going to Excel. jail for that. Are you or serious? Getting too many, you know, getting five bro. too many here. Yeah. Just trying to bro. feed their farm neighbor. The... Bro, and the, the bro steals 450 from me. Nothing. Hey. Out of it out. That's very like the bro. system is like we talked about the whole uh media. So just the, the whole system in entirety it's in its entirety. Holy Rick oh, that's bro. bullshit. Uh. <laughs> bro. The more the more you look into it, it's just like yeah, the, the, the law abiding citizens they get bent over by tax, but like the kind of the crooked ones, they kind of they got ways out of like it's weird, bro. It's weird. Yeah, it's weird. but they know the game, eh, our brother. And that's the thing, like you said, Yo. when you are a young fella, you connected with him, and you, 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 you know, he built that relationship with you. You didn't yeah. know the game, eh, our brother. You know, you know what I mean. Now you do, and hopefully, uh, some young bucks out there can learn from you because you like yeah, they might be in a similar right. situation, brother. Well, what would you say to them? Because like, if maybe there's some young fella like, yeah, but my manager has all the setup with me or something. Well, what would you say to oh, them? Oh, yo. No. Um, easy, bro. Notifications on your phone. Anything touches your bank account, you get a notification pop up on your phone. And then, so back in those days, this is just before, this is just before mobile app banking was started oh. taking off. But right True. now, bro, you as soon as someone touches your money in your bank account, bro, you get a massive notification. You get emails mm. sent. So young fellas listening, bro, if make sure you got notifications on your cards, as soon as someone uses your card, you pop up a notification on your phone. Someone uses your credit card, notification comes up. Bro, that could have solved everything. That could have solved everything for me if I had that set up so, proper. Yeah. So if you did have that set up proper, brother, what would some of the notifications say? We, we, well, like, we, 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 we was he still in your cash? Uh, uh, 5,000 at the Fiji and Hilton. 5,000. Oh! Hey. Oh! Uh, fuck. Bro. Lad, hey, oh. I've never been to PG. Oh. Bro. Holy uh, frick, the rest going on holiday. Oh, fuck. Bro, God, the old jewelry store. Oh. What's it called? Oh, I forgot what the jewelry store in, in Sydney City. Like, bro, I'll never take my missus to that one. Bro, the bro was going there. Cars, 2K, dropping 2K, oh. eh? Hey. Bro, oh, I wouldn't fuck. even take my missus there. <laughs> oh, oh, brother, you know, you know, we were talking about in the 20s, you fellas cracked it with the phones and all of that. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you just cracked it, bro. The bow cracked it out. <laughs> Sorry, bro. Brother, but the bow yeah. cracked it out. Bro. Bro. Fucking bastard. Bro. Bro <laughs> oh, fuck. What the Fiji trips and wow. So, you, there you go. Spray, look out for that stuff, man. If anybody's trying to control your money, cuz he bro, even if 100%. they seem like the, the baddest man, like the bro said, he looked at him like a father, bro. But the bro yeah. ripped up off our 450k, and now it'll be more because you'd have had to pay for litigation and all of that, so it'll be way more. Oh, bro. Yeah, don't even go there, don't even yeah, go yeah, there. No, 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 we don't, no. <laughs> like us, no. it's all good, brother. <laughs> but like, I just no. yeah. Just um, but, yeah, uh, bro, just... your story can be a testament to all the young brothers and sisters, even sisters out there, because you know they're, they're an athlete or whatever. Maybe just they go into a bit of dosh and someone else is looking after their money, set it all up properly. Yeah, hundred percent, bro. Absolutely. Um, and the sad thing about the world, bro, there's people out there that can do that and not even be emotionally phased. They'll still sleep yeah. fine at night, bro. Yeah. Their conscience will be fine. They won't be. Yeah. There's people out there, bro, that will sleep soundly after doing that to someone. Won't even bother Brilliant. them. Uh, it's weird, bro. There's some people that will but, get to sleep perfectly thinking, oh, I just did that, but I'm going to sleep happy. Mm, bro, it's a yeah, sad no. world, bro. <laughs> bro, it's this just, yeah, I don't know. Fuck, it makes me angry because you make, make it want to go see oh, the bro. bro, give him a bit of a dog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Far out, dude. That's wretched, dude. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Up, but shout out to you though, Cuzzy, for coming out the other side. A lot of people would probably fucking nick themselves, brother, or something like that. So, you know what I mean? Because, yeah. because like all that kind of stuff can happen, my bro. Like we people get down about fucking other stuff, you know. In four hundred fifty grand, my brother and your father. I don't know how many babies did you have at that time? I had three. Yeah, crazy. Um, crazy yeah, bro. Bro. But 
but mahi to you, my bro, for, for smashing through it. Obviously, uh, Tigers, Kazi. Tigers, how did you end up there? You did your own contract, did you? But of a manager guy. Well, that was that was right at the time, bro. That was right at the time when I was brushing in and then I found out about all the stuff. So that's when I did the, the contract myself because I just found out Ian had done all of that and I was like, oh, bro, I'm signing this myself. I can't trust, I can't trust no one. Bro, <laughs> yeah. I don't trust yeah. anyone anymore, bro. Anyone. Um, is that so hard that's or easy, brother? Hey? To do? Is that hard to do? To, like, nah, to, to do your own it's contract? It's easy, bro. It's, yeah, it's pretty easy. Yeah. It's stupidly easy. Um, it's just all the minor details. Like a manager, if you have a manager, he would know what other de- what other players are getting at other clubs. So he'll be like, oh, he's getting this. So oh, my player deserves yeah. But if you're doing, doing it one players, else, he? yeah, bro, if you're doing it one else, you don't really know what everyone else is getting. And then the, the final details, the manager might know a car company down the road and be like, oh, I can get you a car. I can take some off your contract. Da, 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 da. So that's it. If you're going to do a one ounce, um, those are the kind of things you might miss out on. And then you hear stories about players getting cash under the table, bro, with some managers. Yeah, hey, uh, what's, what's the bar, um, brother? What's the, what's the bar, brother? For again, um, well, for us, it's one of my favorite of your newer ones that I've seen. Um, I was being my politest, but uh, but you roosted your paper, brown paper bag from Uncle Nick. Yes, love. <laughs> yes, my man, yeah. boy music, oh, man, boy music, check him out, brother. Bro. <laughs> Yes, bro, I don't think no one, no one caught the bar, bro. I don't think no one bro, caught the bar. Cause it, in, in a past life, life, I used to, I used, in a past life, I used to rhyme a little bit, cause you know, you know, it's, Yo, it's my. I don't, I don't know about you, but like just, just for myself, and you know, with our boys, and just you know, right heaps, brothers. Just my best friend when I was down and out, no one to talk to. I just rap, rap, <laughs> rap to myself, cause so I love bars, brother. Yeah, bro, I, I think there's, bro. I think there's a rapper in every Maori, bro. Straight up, <laughs> yeah, there's a rap in every Maori. 100%. There's a tutu in every Maori too, cuz. <laughs> tutu, bro. Tutu, bro. Yeah, that's why we're here, brother. We're we both tutus, you know. You tutu on the, on the boy music and <laughs> you tutu in a bit of rugby league. And I tutu in a bit of podcast and here we are, cuz. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, that's, that's the risk you take. If you're going to be a manager yourself, um, those are the risks you take because you might miss out on those little intricacies on your contract. So you just got to be careful. There you go, finally. Just be careful if you're going to do the one outs. If you're going to one out anyone, go one out Ian Mars. Nah, just joking. That was, uh, that was a joke. Um, anyway. Um... Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, Sorry, how's so you doing? But you became a pilot, brother. Like, what's the, how did that all happen? Because you're a pilot there, a commercial pilot. You can fly a yeah. Boeing. So my last year, Tigers, bro. So oh, Madge wasn't picking me in the team. Yeah, um... too angry, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro. <laughs> Yeah, he actually wanted me to go to the Super League, bro. He didn't really want me in the team. Like, respect to Madge, he was he was straight up with me, like out the well, gate. At least he was honest. Hey, yeah, yeah, managers, um, managers. Uh, so he got the job at Tigers, and he was straight up with me. He was like, "Mate, I, I don't really need you here. I've got a contract for you in in Hull, KR. Uh, you know, it's there for you to take. Let your missus and that know." At the time, bro, I was like, "Bro, what?" Oh, bro, I'm like, I'm working my ass off to be here, the Tigers, and now you've come in and just been like, da 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 da. Um, and so I wasn't, I wasn't playing, bro. I was in and out of the team, and so I was like, bro, this is my last year on contract. The way Mad trains is crazy. My body's falling apart, so I need mm-hmm. something to fall back on. I was like, oh, bro, I might as well give this a crack, um, because my uncle-in-law, my my wife's uncle, Uncle mm-hmm. Sean, shout out to Uncle Sean. Uh, he's oh, a sure. and um he was saying telling me get your ticket in australia and then when you retire come back to the islands and you and you can fly with fly with us and so i was like oh bro okay then so i did the mahi in the books bro heavy mahi in the books bro yeah. oh, I was read 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 um but it was kind of good for me bro like i i wasn't playing first grade i was a bit annoyed but i had something to take out my anger on and that was studying um, I was going through the ear miles stuff at the same time, and I was yeah. angry, but I was taking my anger out on the on the study books, bro, and going hundy on the Ch- study books, bro. Channeled it, eh, brother? Channeled that anger, grabbed it. Yeah, and yeah. It into... So yeah, if yeah. anyone's going through, you know, any tough 
something tough, um, yeah, make sure you always channel the energy in the right places. Because as you said before, I could have easily gone, oh, bro, I'm going to get this dude. Like, where does he live? hundred percent. Yeah, you, uh, you probably already knew where he lived, cuz. Yeah, yeah bro, I knew where he lived, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, what's, the, it's, uh, what's the Eddie? No, 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 no. <laughs> bro, P.O. Box Christchurch. <laughs> <one's another. laughs> Be a don't, make me, don't make me. But yeah, bro, got into the books, did the study, um, did the mahi. It was hard, bro. Those exams are hard. But um, as you do the tutu, bro, you get through it. Um, yeah, got through it. And then COVID hit, bro. So I was, I was supposed to retire oh. to 2020 and then go Oh, fly no planes, Ian. No yeah, flights. no planes, bro. No planes. COVID, Fuck. COVID, everything. So I was like, oh shit, where should I, what should I do now? And then Salford here in the United Kingdom, they rang and they're like, are you keen to come over? Da, 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 da. And I was like, oh yeah, bro, sweet. Cause it was January and all the other teams had already started training. And I was like, oh bro, I'm a bit behind the eight ball here. Um, yep. So I came, that's why I ended up in the United Kingdom, bro. Red Devils. And, uh, yeah. So it was crazy, bro. <laughs> COVID come at a wrong time kind of thing. But but you're qualified though, because you say you when when you're when the Mahi's all done on the footy field, you know, uh you can go and fly some planes, British Airways, yeah, yeah, the, the Emirates. Is, is there is there a destination you wanna pull up at or you you just see, see nah, what happens? Well, you'd have to start at like the, the cheap ones, bro, like EasyJet or Jetstar, because they they were accepted, that's why they're the cheap ones. Oh, um, true. Yeah, you don't get the yeah. Emirates until you, you know, obviously you got to work. Oh, shit. Oh, no, you just got to know one of those six, my cousin. Fucking hell, get us a job. That's the thing. Like, <laughs> it's who you know. It's who you know, bro. Like, if you know yeah. someone there, yeah, they'll get you in. Um, yeah. What's but, when uh, uh, what's, what's when footy hacks goes about 10 million, brother, then, the, you know? Baby, they will want you to fly for them, cuz. See? Yeah, we'll see, we'll see, bro. But that's um, yeah, that's how it works. And uh, so my body's falling apart, bro. Like literally, mm. thirty-four now. Um, knee, shoulders, bro. So uh, it'll be an alright job in terms of not physical. I don't have to do anything physical, like lift yeah. or push or yeah. yeah, bro. So it'll be alright. It'll be alright. What's the what's the main differences between the U, the Super League and the uh, NRL? Uh, uh, the I, know, skill... I, know, I know you're not in the Super League now. You're uh, a couple of divisions yeah. down. But what, how do you say it? Is it Oldham or Oldham? I don't know. Oldham, I Oldham. Yeah. So, Oldham. S- Super League, bro. NRL Super League, bro. Um, the speed speed of the game and skill level. The, the physicality is similar, but the speed of the game and the skill level... Uh, in our hours is so much, um, yeah, bro. It's so much way ahead, way ahead. Like, big gap. A lot of people mm. say, Oh, how come we can be, how come Saints and Wigan beat Penrith? Da, 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 da. It's just like, bro, okay, take all the Australians out of the Wigan team, Jayfield, <laughs> Bevan French, cuz <laughs> then the starting third, Kate Dallas. You take those three out of the team, bro, different team, totally different team. You take mm. all the Australians out of the St. Helens team, bro. Different team. Like, but um, but but also it's probably it probably even just like keeping them in there probably means more to the fucking other side of the world too. If we see, like, because you like the Super League's like little brother to NRL. Oh, really, bro, yeah, so they, absolutely. Like, oh, the, we just the want to smash these fellas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, NRL is like the big brother over here, like. That looks down on the Super League kind of thing. That's the that's an attitude. That's the stigma. Like um, like everybody over here was like, oh, Penrith, these hot shots from Sydney think they're mean. Like they think they're good. And I was like, bro, Penrith is the west of Sydney. Everyone looks down at Penrith. Like Penrith ain't the big smoke. They think Penrith's like right in the city of Sydney, bro. Like the flash, oh. the flash. <laughs> you think guys. This, you think bro, Penrith's opera house? <laughs> Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. That's what, that's their attitude. They're like, oh, these big hot shots from Sydney, like coffee drinkers and that. It's just like, bro, <laughs> bro. It's just like, cause everyone looks at down on them in Sydney. Everyone looks down on them. It's just mm. like, wow, crazy. Jeez. That's the big differences, brothers. The 
like physicality is the same in there, but just the speed of the game, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, oh, similar, and similar physical skill. Speed and skill. skill. Yeah. yeah. They, yeah so, speed and skill. but what about um? You know, you talked about your body, my bro, being my mind being and it's breaking yeah. down all that. What, what kind of like do they have any uh afi any any help for you fellows like uh like how does how does all that stuff go because i've seen the nrl wants to buy the super league what do you think about all that like is that going to oh, help bro. like that would be the, the best thing that happened to the competition if the nrl bought the super league bro that would be the best thing that had happened for the players here in england so the rlpa in new zealand or in australia they look after the players yeah. you know you get injured you get payout uh, you have a career-ending injury, there's a hardship fund for you to access. You want to go study something, bro? Here's 5K towards your study. Whatever you want to study, bro. Like Just stuff like that at the NRL. In Super League, there's nothing for players. Nothing at all. Like, Gee. bro, in NRL, like if you're a top 30 player, I think you get 15 grand in your retirement account every year just for you. Oh, true. For you. Yeah, bro. And Super League, oh, wow. no such thing as that. Um, oh, so, n- nothing, bro. Oh. Nothing, zero. Did they? Did the NRL help you with it, or the RLPA? Did they help you with the um, the getting becoming a pilot or anything like that? Yeah, like, absolutely. That's off? exactly why that, I was just about to say that, bro. Like that was the only reason why I um, well, that was one of the reasons why I did it because they were paying half, and they were supporting me. So they they introduced me to a pilot. Like uh, he was a former player. His name is Ben Harris. Oh, Bulldogs. Um, yes, bro. Bulldogs? Yes, ben he, Harris. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's a captain. He's a captain of uh, Virgin, I think. A three D twenty. Yeah. Flash. So they organized. They organized me a meeting with him, bro, just to have a coffee. Just small things like that, you know. That's all. Small that's all, like that, brother. That's crazy. Yeah. So um. Yeah, lad. That, that's how that come about, anyway. So, so yeah, you think that's an awesome thing? Hopefully, the NRL does uh, buy the Super League. It will be Absolutely. good for. And, and um, the talk about uh, the, the little. Are you are you living in Oldham or are you somewhere else at the moment? No, I'm you... living in uh, Manchester. I'm living in the city of Manchester. Uh, oh yeah, always cold. City, you, bro, always cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, city or United? Uh, it's city. It's city, bro. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, no, they're good. But yeah. they, that was the old sheik say eh? the old sheiks put a bit of money in there. Yeah, the yeah, that's it, bro. That's it. It's yeah, crazy, the old bro. Sheik dosh. Crazy. No, I mean, yeah. uh, so what's the goal for your fellas' team this year, Cuzzy? Uh, the Oldham's so want to get up to the next. Yeah, we're trying to get up to the next um, championship and then up to Super League. That's the that's the goal of the club. It's it's ambitious. Um. Yeah, bro. I look forward to the challenge. They've, obviously, they brought me for the experience to pass on to the young fellas coming through, um, which I enjoy. I enjoy um, teaching them, and, and part of my content comes from them, bro, because they always ask questions, and I'm like, oh, that'll be a good content to chop up. Ask me some more. <laughs> oh, uh, is that, is that how? So that's why you started Footy Hex because of it. Oh, kind of, bro, because they're always asking questions. They're like, oh, what's it like doing this? Oh, what's it like doing this? And I was like, oh, bro, I could chop this up. Um, Me, and, uh, yeah, I love bro. them, bro. And that's how, it, that's how it come about, really. Um, but, yeah, they're an ambitious club, bro. They want to get up to Super League. they got some financial backing, and um, I think I think we can do it. It's just about uh, injuries because we don't have much depth. So if we get injuries to the top players, we don't have much depth to, to fall on. So we'll see what happens. Got um coach your coach Sean Long too. He's a bit of a gun back in the days, hey, for Great Britain, right. England. Weapon. It's uh um, yeah, one of the best halves that ever come from this country. And it's crazy, bro. I'm and I'm learning things about the game where I should have learned like when I was 18. Like true. Like what? Can you give an example of one? Oh, bro, like, so don't catch the ball on the ad line when it's a slow play the ball because the line speed is going to be really good. So you catch it deep, so you've got more time to play. I never knew that. No one taught me that. No one taught me that when oh, I was 18. True. Yeah, bro, but do, just, you think, just... do you think Do you think that's, like, back home, though? Do you think because, like, hey? back home, do you think that's back home things? Like, do you think if you grew up in Sydney, you might have learned that earlier? or what? Is... Oh, a little bit. I remember at the Warriors, bro, when we were young, it was all about effort. Everything's about effort, like, that was in your mind, bro. You make sure you don't give up. You just mm. keep going, bro. Which is cool. 
that's a cool that you know that's a cool to be drilled into when you're young like support yeah. kick push out all the one percenters that were drilled into me when i was young at the at the, at the warriors i'm not hating on that but just no, the, no, the no. finer details the finer details and attack um yeah bro like playing tempo slow to fast not sprinting straight away like controlling how fast you go before you pass it it's just like little things that can make a big difference in terms of how you how you see the game bro and i'm learning it i'm pretty gutted i'm learning it from sean and i'm 34 <laughs> yeah. i wish i learned this from yeah, you might you might have got uh, ninety eight tackles instead of seventy seven, cuz. Hey, you know, okay? uh, yeah. All the things I'm learning, it's not it's not defensively; it's all attack over here. That's a big difference yeah. too. Oh, too they just attack. they oh because they run from everywhere too. Eh? They're keen to just bro, run like like, like trans they'll, down from they'll everywhere. Offload, they'll offload on their try line, cuz like bro, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it reminds me of like the two thousand, the early two thousands blues. Uh, with Carlos spins in them, by the way. Yeah, yo, yo, just yo, just yo, throw yo, the yo. ball around and then go. Yeah. Entertaining, <laughs> yeah. bro. It's entertaining footy. Yeah, um, the, the, the small games I get to watch, uh, like on on KO over here. Not many, but yeah, that's what I see. Just, uh, yeah, the bro yeah. sling the ball from everywhere, just keen. Right, hundred mm. percent. Nah, it's um. Yeah. It's good. It's a different type of brand of footy. It's not just a NRL kind of copy paste brand of footy. Like there's their own kind of English footy over here, where they kick early or they shift early. Like they shift early in their sets, like pass, pass, long pass, long pass. Um, where the NRL is probably just one off the ruck for the first, yeah, you know, for five sets, build pressure, kick corners. Yeah, um, that's it. Win games that way, you know. Yeah, uh, but yeah, a big big eye opener. Big eye opener. So you don't know how how much long you're gonna play for, cause you said the body's pakaru. Um, of course. Oh, that's not, you know. not too bad. That's not too bad. But about about two more years left in me, bro. I reckon three more yeah. years. It's so you more, see, older more, more the way to the Super League. Uh, get the get the team all the way up there, cause. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, they'll be they'll be cool to go out on that. They'll be cool to go out on that. But it's more mentally as well, bro. I've been doing this for since I was eighteen, seventeen. Bro, mentally, it's just like, bro, this again, like, oh, the preseason's in that, yeah, bro, hundred percent. Like, it just starts, it stops being fun. Oh, um, yeah. so yeah, bro, as as all things. No, Mickey, my brother. Hey, before before you peace out, like, I know I've kept you for a long time, my cousin, so I won't keep you much longer. Good, I've got a couple, got a couple, of, couple of questions, my bro, from uh, yeah, uh, for a few, uh, a few. You keen to have a have a little jam? Yeah, yeah, yeah all good, all good, all good. Okay, uh, so this one's from me though. I was, I was gonna lie and say it came from someone else. Uh, your who's your top five MCs of all time? <laughs> top five MCs. <laughs> yeah, brother. Uh, MCs. So number one would be Eminem. Uh, number Eminem, two yeah. would be probably Crooked Eye or Loaded Lux. That's three. Uh, okay, yeah. Nas. Yeah. And probably Big Pun. Big Pun's in there. Oh yeah, dead in the middle of little, 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 yeah, middle, yeah, middle, yeah. middle, 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 middle. Let's go, my diddly, brother. Diddly, yo. <laughs> yeah, big pun, bro. He's a my top Crazy. five too. So, and nice yeah. and as well. Um, who's the who's the biggest hitter of all time that you've that you've been on the field? You've either seen it or felt it, or you know, been on the same team. Who's the biggest hitter in your opinion? Benny Madalino, bro. Benny Mats. Yeah. Bro, Benny Mats, bro. I've popped some mean ones at training too. Ooh. <laughs> oh, you can of imagine, uh, brother. When you see oh, the bro about... dip down, oh, cars yeah. overs run over that way. Tip <laughs> <laughs> on, tip on, tip on. Later, bro. <laughs> bro, tip on, cuz. You take it, you take it. Oh, Benny Mats, eh? And, yeah, and boy, was, was, was he still like cracking them? Like, because you said Madge's trainings were hard. Was he still cracking them when you were. When Madge was doing those hearty trainings, brother, like, oh uh, yeah, a little bit, bro, because because it was always hundred percent with Madge. Like you had to go full on contact, mouth guard, strap. Like this is a game, but it was contact. Bro. Oh, bro, lad, run it straight too. Like here's a ball, run it straight to Benny Mats. Good luck, bro. And if you ran soft, you had to do it again. It was like oh, oh, oh. for a wretched uh, Madge, lad, lad. <laughs> Oh, yeah. like, oh, maybe that origin thing's beautiful and then they can break and chill out a bit. <laughs> yeah. I reckon it's why it does so well and with the Kiwis as well, bro, because they don't get that that full intensity of Madge every every week, bro. 
Because mm. brother, if you were to play any sport besides rugby league or rugby union, what would yeah. you what would you have a crack at? I'd like to be a boxer, bro. Ooh, but, yeah. Hey, uh, I'd like, yeah, yeah I'd like to be you're a right. boxer. Hey? You all right? Yeah, but I would have with my all my head knocks I've had, bro. No way. I've, oh. I've had too many head knocks, bro. So, but I'd like to be, I've been a boxer, bro. They'll be mad. Just the, like, as you get older, you look into other sports and you just see the science of boxing, bro. Like, why he did that, the setup trap plays. Like, yeah. Bro, the more you look into it, you're just like, wow. Like, it's not just two blokes throwing punches, bro. They're like setting up moves and that. It's just like, wow. That's crazy. Yeah, who, who, who's your who's, who's your favorite boxer uh, that you like to study? Just I don't know if you uh, like to just Floyd, study them or Floyd's defense, bro. Floyd Mayweather's defense, bro. The like, man, yeah. Wow. Like if if you're if you're just a, not a fan properly, you're probably like watching him thinking, bro, he's boring. He all he does is defend. Like, but when you like look into it proper and you see what he's actually doing, it's like wow, crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 hitting and not getting it. Yeah, like you, yeah, you go in there right. and do it there now, right. fucking, he's boring. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, you go in there and have a crack. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, how did you avoid temptation on partying and alcohol growing up? Because, uh, like, you know, as Maoris, especially, brother, that shit's around yeah. us all the time, like partying, alcohol, yeah. he's talking. How do you how did you avoid that, brother? As a young buck, that question comes from my uncle Peter Graham. Shout out to Uncle Peter. Yo, yo, bro, great question. Um, environment, bro. So when I was with my dad, bro, yo, we drinking every weekend, skyline garage, guitar, uh, all, all the all the items, bro. <laughs> um and then I moved by mum. It was a different environment, bro. So uh, mum didn't really drink much. Um, I was, it was just me and my brother with her. Um, so everything was, it wasn't like party party where my dad's with, with dad, bro, bro. The bro's always on the Billy Mavericks. Um, <laughs> yeah, gee, the Billy Mavericks, bro. Always every Friday, Saturday. Yeah. To me, um, but mum, bro, different environment. So that, that helped me, bro. So I was in a different environment. So yeah, to all the kids listening, bro, you got to go to a different environment, G. That's why I feel that helped me a lot. Mm. Ah, beautiful, my bro. Beautiful. Yo. Thank you. And um, one last one, my cousin. If you could ask, if you could, if you could only have one meal for the rest of your life, what, 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 what meal are you choosing? Bro, what meal are one for the rest of my life? Probably a boil up, bro. There's different, you know. You, got the yeah, cousin, you know, you can mix man. it up. You got the That's very good really pork awesome. bones one night, then you can just have a soup, the boil up <laughs> soup, and then you have the, <laughs> the, the veggies. Yeah, the cousin. Yeah. You got different options, bro. You got different options. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to the boil up, cousin. What do you got? Yo, what, 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 what you want? A, you want your puha man, or you watercress man, or you want a cabbage? Watercress, what, watercress, bro. Puha, spiky, spiky, too spiky in the throat. The old freaking yeah, puha. Uh, is it like something else? That, uh, is it like something? Bacon bones, two G. Bacon oh. bones only. Bacon bro. bones, guys. Well, I think I think we might be brothers because that's my favorite boil up. Bacon bones, brother. Bacon watercress. Bones, yeah, cousin, you know, that's my favorite. Huh? But you know, I'm going pork bones if that's what's on offer or sausages. But bacon yeah, bones, cousin. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Hey, my, my brother. Uh, before we go, is there any chance I can get a either maybe a little freestyle or something, some bars you got on your phone that you've been putting oh, together or anything? Yeah. But yeah, it's all right yeah, if you don't yeah. want to, cousin. Oh, oh, like, you know, uh... oh, not at the top. Oh, I should have told me oh, earlier. No. But... Oh, sorry, yeah. my brother. Sorry, no, no, no. But no, whatever, whatever, whatever you got. Let's uh, go. Yeah. Boy music, Fano, boy music. Check them out. YouTube. Where else can they get your uh, your jams, brother? Uh, YouTube, Instagram, bro. YouTube, Instagram. Boy music, Fano. Check it out. Yo, um, they want to take me for a ride, but I don't need this. I've been thinking my own reasons why. It seems leeches at time to scheme this. They're trying to take my kindness for weakness. Hide in secret or comply. If it's fine, just keep it. Should I give a piece of my mind or the silent treatment? I'm not wilding like asylum sinkers thinking, why even try to get a visa? Am I a deceiver? Should I take these to the dry cleaners? Quiet, obsequious, NFL wide receivers. 
Bumping worse to five nine in the speakers. Since the mega drive was a seeker, I got no time for breathers. Wine drink his lazy eyes from the sleepers. I'm one of a kind when my mind gets to thinking, nah, ain't do the crime or sneak the spineless while other guys try to get the features. Yo. <laughs> yeah, that's some fire from that about our boy music. Eliza Taylor, what a way to knock it out the park, cuz I just thought of one more question there while you were rhyming. Um, who's your favorite MC to ever come out of our, our shows, Aotearoa, New Zealand? It'd probably be, uh, the, 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 yeah, it'd be Scribe, bro. Scribe. I remember Bumping yeah. Scribe, bro. Dreaming, bro. That's a timeless track, G. Dreaming yeah. is. I'm just like, I'll, I'll listen to that 20 years from now, that bro, yeah. and that would still hit. Like, yeah, one of those classics, yeah. bro, simple as beat, like just a uh, loop with the piano, drums, and that's it. I think that's simple, that's all, brother. Like, a bass, like three tracks, right. bro, classic. Yeah, yeah. yeah classic. Did, did you ever get into that, that untitled song on, on that album? Eh? The untitled, no. Nah. And not your stereotypical type it. of individual. Yeah, yeah, brother. That's on there. Yeah. Far oh, from yeah, the yeah, nonsense yeah. while people walk the street in the sleep, I stay conscious, ready to speak over beats for the meek. I think it's like one of the most underrated scribe songs, brother, for me. All right, I'm gonna check it out. Yeah, I'm titled because he's yo, yo, yo. Yeah, I'll send it to you anyway, my bro. But thank you, my but my cousin. Time's the most valuable commodity we have as human beings, my cousin. And yours is precious just like everyone else's. So thank you for sharing your time with me, my brother, and anybody else that watches or listens on any other platforms, man. And uh, yeah, hopefully this isn't the last time we sit down and call it all my brother. And maybe even in the flesh, we can you know have a have a latte. Mm, I didn't even drink them. Definitely, brother. Bro. <laughs> water. Water. <laughs> thank you for having You're me, bro. Thing, my brother. Appreciate that. Hey. Anytime, my cousin, and just send you know, I'll keep uh sharing the cousins all your footy hacks, man. And hopefully, uh, something if somebody takes something out of this, my brother, there's I think beautiful gems that you've shared with people, brother. And yeah, what a story, brother, what a legend. I know we didn't get into the Kiwis, but I mean, we covered enough, cuz far out. Right? What do you all want good, me to do? No worries, for three hours? <laughs> Big love, my brother. No worries, cuz. All good, bro. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this full episode of Mind the Mic. It takes a lot of time, energy and effort to create these episodes. So to know that you've watched and listened to the entire thing means the world to myself and all our hosts. If you could, before you leave, please hit the subscribe button and share this episode out to as many people as possible. It would help us so much. Thank you again to everybody that's still here, still watching. Thank you for all your comments, all your shares, all the DMs appreciate you all make sure you follow us on every platform have an awesome morning have an awesome night depending on where you are in the world mind the mic out oi have you hit the link in bio yet watch full episodes on youtube or listen on spotify apple Podcasts, and all streaming platforms oh,